Hey everybody, Epic Eddie here, and we're here for another Real Talk Tuesday. Uh, today we're going to get into some things, <laughs> maybe something a little controversial, and that is open relationships and my involvement with them too. So you guys are going to learn quite a bit about me if you haven't already, so we're going to get into it. But before we do, again, remember, if you've gotten anything out of these videos, make sure you smack that like button, and also don't forget to subscribe, man. That's going to help me out immensely to do more of these shows for you, and also take the time to share it, man, your friends, your family, your enemies, whoever, <laughs> Hopefully, they'll enjoy it too. But that being said, we can't get into a Real Talk Tuesday without some tequila. <laughs> and I think we're going to need it this time. So first, uh, we're going to get into... So we, I got the commissario. I've, I've had this one before. Shout out to, again to my boy AP um, for putting me onto this. He, him and his crew made a really good tequila. This one's really good. This is the Anejo. I'm still waiting on uh, him to you know give me some of the Blanco or the uh, Reposado. But this one I actually bought myself. It's really good smooth tequila. So let's get into it. <laughs> mm. Tequila time. Mm. Well done. Well done, guys. So, mm. yeah, I need another. So we're going to get into this thing. <laughs> but before we get into it, I kind of have to... I guess explain what an open relationship is because it can really look like anything, honestly. So an open relationship is kind of, it's different than a monogamous relationship. A monogamous relationship being one person and one person, just those two exclusively in a relationship. Whereas an open relationship is kind of how it sounds, it's open to other people. Now the thing is, this can look many different kinds of ways. You have swinging, which is usually, it's usually a couple and they usually swing with other couples. Again, that dynamic may look a little bit different sometimes, but while they might have other relationships as far as like friendships, they don't technically have other actual relationships. It, it is more about the fun and of the sexual nature and having those friendships along the way. Whereas say polyamory is more of a couple that may have, are open to other actual relationships. Maybe a married couple that has a, one has a boyfriend, one has a girlfriend. And again, that whole dynamic could look different too uh, and then you have all kinds of other stuff you have um you know thruples or or tri uh, triads you have some who are just in they just call it an open relationship and while they are together those that's their spouse that's their partner they are open to other avenues or sexual experiences with other people or possibly other relationships so it all looks different <laughs> but that actually brings me to one of my big points about this why open relationships are actually something i am open to and that is because i think that the rules of a relationship should not be dictated by what kind of society says a relationship should be but i think it should be dictated by what those people in that relationship I hate to say rule, but I think more like the boundaries that those people put on their relationship. And I think that's when it's it, you can kind of set your own terms. And then, you know, as long as everyone's happy and it's all consensual, why not? So that being said, me personally, so we're going to get into some stories of my own personal uh, adventures, if you will. But me personally, as far as what I'm into as a relationship, I, I'm really open to whatever. For me, it personally just depends on who I'm with. Am I open to monogamous relationships? Yes, very much so. Am I open to open relationships? Yes, also very so. Now, exploring, now I've actually never been a, like I have a, had a primary open relationship and I'll kind of explain what that means in a bit, but I have all the rest of my actual relationships have been monogamous. So since I moved to Vegas, I started kind of exploring into more open relationships with people, but I've been more kind of a secondary, which again, I'll explain that in a bit. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's really opened my mind. It's really allowed me to learn a lot about myself, who I am as a person, as an individual, what I am, who I am in a relationship, who, what I want in a relationship, what I want in other people. So it's, it's actually really interesting. Uh, it's it had, had me to really face a lot of my insecurities, had to face a lot of uh, what I need to work on for myself and what things I, I need from other people to feel secure in a relationship. So 
it, it's it's really a, I mean not saying everybody should try it because <laughs> it's not for everybody and I'm gonna say that too it's those types of relationships are not for everybody but also monogamous relationships are not for everybody either so just being able to explore myself and just kind of see where I stand I think has been a developed a lot of growth uh, throughout the, the the past few years so uh, I'm gonna give you a few of the <laughs> the kind of relationships I wound up in and what I've kind of learned from it so the first one when I first moved to Vegas I had actually been on one of the dating sites and it was a couple who the wife they were actually a married couple and the wife was in said you know her she's married she has a husband but they have an open relationship so we decided to go on a date and you know because I was open to see and talk and explore and so we hit it off pretty decent Recently. The thing with this one that was interesting was I actually never met her husband and it to a point where I was like, all right, show me like a text or something just to let me know it's not just you out here cheating. <laughs> the difference is if someone is in a monogamous relationship and they have not set rules or boundaries or you know, had a conversation about being open and one person is doing whatever they want to do, then that's what I consider cheating. Now, if two people have had set boundaries and they're open to other people, then that's fine. And again, even within that, there's own rules and boundaries. And if you kind of go beyond those, that's what I consider cheating. But that's all made within your conversation. So I was like, I'm going to need to see a text or something to let me know that that's okay. And so she actually sent me, showed me a text from him from the night that we actually wound up together that he was actually going out with his girlfriend because he actually had a girlfriend. And so he was like, yeah, babe, have fun. You know, if you need anything, just let me know, but I'll be out all night. And then she was like, cool, he'll be over. So had a few nights together. We had a few dates together and we had it off well. And the unfortunate thing though with that one was that eventually her and her husband had, a, had just, there was some issues. I don't know if they were family stuff. I don't know the details because she didn't really tell me, but she let me know, hey, we're actually working through some things. So um, I'm going to have to take a pause on this and maybe we can come back down, you know, to it down the road. But for right now, I just, we need to work on some things. And so unfortunately I'm, I'm going to have to wait for a bit. And I mean, we only kind of saw each other for a few weeks, so it wasn't like anything serious. But at the same time, I was kind of digging her. And so it kind of sucked that, unfortunately, I had to stop with something that was not even in my control. It's not like I did anything wrong. It's not like I messed up. It was just that they had issues and they had to work on it. And that was their primary relationship. So going into what I was saying before about primary and secondary. So primary typically means that that is the main relationship. If in any kind of open relationship or polyamory relationship, the primary is your primary partner, is your immediate partner. That's your that's your main squeeze, if you will. <laughs> the secondary tends to be all, any of the other relationships that are connected to that. But yeah, it's, so I was I was the secondary in that in that situation. And so I kind of had to fall back. And so that kind of, kind of sucked a bit, but again, it was, it was fun in the moment. It was as long as everyone was consensual and she enjoyed it. And then eventually I think she hit me up one other time beyond that. And then we just kind of fizzled out. The second one that I had gotten involved with was actually, again, I was a husband and wife, but this time it actually meant the husband. So the, our first date, they actually invited me over for dinner and they were both going to cook dinner for me and we were all going to eat one that he could kind of get to know me to kind of check like, Hey, if you're going to be one wife, I'm going to make sure you're cool. Also just cause I, they were a lot more open with things as far as them talking and, and knowing everyone, which that one was actually really cool. I actually went over to dinner and I thought it was going to be a little awkward, but I, you know, again, I'm spontaneous. I'm open to things and trying stuff. So I was like, well, let's see. And it was actually really cool. Actually, me and him got along really well. <laughs> she was like, do we need to give you guys a moment? <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 no. I was, you know, he, he was just a cool dude. We drank beer. We had a good time, chatted it up. And, you know, it was just really cool. And so once I got the stamp of approval, basically, she was like yeah we need to spend some more time because again this was off of a dating site and we chatted a bit and we just hit it off really well then when i came to the house me and him hit it off well so he was comfortable with her you know going out with me and doing stuff and so i mean we've we made out and stuff a couple times but never turned into a sexual relationship because unfortunately the same situation happened <laughs> where they wound up going through some issues and so they had to take a break and i am very thankful that in both instances two things 
one, very apologetic, and then two, just made it well known that, hey, it was nothing that you did. It's just something that we have to deal with. So I do appreciate that because it is kind of easy in those situations to feel like it is something you did. (laughs) But at the end of the day, it it has nothing to do with me. But that's also where it kind of makes it hard for me because then you miss out on something that could have been really awesome and it has nothing to do with you. But again, that was something that was only a few weeks in. So we really didn't get to, it wasn't like we were in a, in a deep relationship. The most recent one, which was a third one for me, was a little uh, a little tough. So this girl I had met just in different groups and things that I teach, uh, went to a convention, and she was already in a sort of relationship kind of dynamic uh, with someone else. Someone else I was actually pretty cool with. And so we wound up hitting it off just really well. I mean, we have had times when we all have hung out and things always seem cool. When me and her hang out, it was just, it's just, amazing man like we just hit it off so 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 well so they had an open thing but me and her had a a thing and so it was just it was just fire like it was just awesome and i mean not just even the sexual relationship but also just the actual relationship like times we just sitting down watching the couch and watching movies you know just spending time with her she always made me feel good about myself like just hearing her laugh was great like i just i really 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 enjoyed her company and i really liked her a lot unfortunately though i think jealousy got in the way of that on the other end, uh, not really with me, because again, I was I was fine with stuff. I came into what was already a sort of established kind of dynamic and relationship, so I was comfortable. And we, it seemed like we had a routine kind of going. There was times I spent time with her. There's times he would spend time with her. Well, actually, they live together, so you know they would spend time. And so for me, it was it was it was fine and it was good. And it was actually starting to get a little bit more actual serious with me and her to where it would be like an actual relationship. And then unfortunately, um, kind of jealousy came around. Now this also came around the time when I was just dealing with a lot, and so it just got to a point where I just I couldn't couldn't do it, and so. I pulled myself out of the equation because I just felt like I had no control over anything to where it's just like, no matter what I say or do, I can't change anything. I can't fix anything because I'm not doing anything wrong. <laughs> and then we've abided by kind of the the boundaries that they've had. And, and even if that changed, we try to change what we do. And so it was just kind of evident that that person wasn't maybe necessarily good, or at least at that moment with something as open on her end and so yeah i had to just pull myself of the equation because i just it was hard for me to try to sit there in the wings waiting to see what would happen and at the same time just dealing with so much stuff that i've been dealing with over the past few years and then just try not to get my heart broken <laughs> so to prevent all that i just pull myself out of the equation so that was definitely um an unfortunate loss for me as as someone in my life but at the end of the day i, I want everyone to be happy and so if their partner was not going to be happy with her seeing someone and she's not gonna be happy if she's feel like and she's being split you know having to make decisions or split in two and then i'm not gonna be happy if i'm waiting in the wings and just nobody's happy so i rather them just be happy and enjoy themselves and then i figure out my own happiness now through all this i've kind of learned a lot about me and a few of the things i've learned is this one i'm actually still very open to an open type relationship but i've learned that i'm probably gonna have to have my own primary partner someone that i know has my back is gonna be with me it's through thick and thin and I think that a lot of that stems to I have bad abandonment issues and that's something I kind of learned on my own throughout throughout this I'm no therapist but I'm pretty sure it stems to like my dad not being there and then after that like people passing out of my life and then also like girls leaving and having crappy friends that like you know I thought was gonna be there and they weren't and just that pile on of things eventually it's just like I don't mind if people have to go but I hate either knowing they go without anything that I've like no control of trying to make it work like I can't do anything and they're just gonna still go or them just not saying anything and just kind of disappearing like that just it it fucks with me and so just to know that I have somebody that I know is gonna have my back is like the most important thing I think for me as nice it is kind of in the secondary thing because what is kind of nice being in the secondary relationship is just that I can kind of enjoy my life and do my things and I almost feeling still single now I respect the boundaries that we put on that relationship it becomes a serious thing as far as sexual partners and protection and things like that nature but I still get to kind of feel that feel of being single but also kind of that feel of having some type of relationship or somebody in my corner so that is kind of nice however 
when you start to connect with that person and then them being like it being taken from you with no way to get, to keep it, it, it that's a tough thing so i think i much more prefer a primary relationship and as far as what that open relationship would look like I'm still kind of working on that. I don't necessarily know if I'm super open to a, like an actual polyamory relationship where it's several different relationships with people. It's just, I think it's hard for my brain to kind of wire that. And then I'm also, I also get to where I'm just worried of losing that person to someone. And so I think when it gets to the actual relationships, it's, it's, that'll be hard and not a complete deal breaker. I mean, who knows? You never know who you meet, who changes how you feel. But I, I just, I'm, I kind of think that more of a swinging lifestyle might be okay with me because I can separate. I know I'm like with this person, the emotions here, this person has my back, but open to other sexual experiences and again putting our own boundaries and guidelines within that so that we respect each other and respect our boundaries but i I think i'm more open to that or maybe possibly like a triad kind of situation or throuple kind of situation if i'm with a girl who also like girls and she wanted to introduce a girl into a relationship then possibly that too so yeah there's i mean i'm i'm open but then i'm also open to a monogamous relationship like i mean yes i'm a very sexually open person but who knows you may meet somebody was just like yeah that's my person but the one big thing i can't do if it is monogamous relationship or actually any relationship is just jealousy i can't i can't deal with that i have a very flirty personality i am a flirty kind of person i I've been told I exude sexuality just because I'm comfortable with it. And I and I notice attractive people. I think all people notice attractive people. If you have eyeballs, <laughs> you're going to notice attractive people. Someone who gets super jealous about that stuff, that's not going to work for me. But other than that, I, I'm kind of open to what that person winds up being open to as well. But, you know, I'm also enjoying being single <laughs> and doing my thing and not having to look back and rely on anybody or having to say check in with anybody so i mean i'm enjoying single while i'm single but as when if somebody freaking awesome comes around i'm so down to kind of start really building something together with somebody so it takes me time it takes me time so don't rush ladies all right slow down <laughs> slow down don't we're not gonna rush into it but uh i'm definitely down to go on some dates meet somebody awesome and usually too actually this brings me to another point if i am going to work into an open relationship uh, it's probably going to take time to open it so that being said like i think i would want to start with a monogamous relationship with someone even if we establish in the beginning hey we would ideally like to open this up later on cool but i think i would want to start monogamous just so that we can build the foundation of our relationship so that when we do open it up that it makes it a lot easier to tackle the things that may come up because whether you believe it or not it will make you tackle things like jealousy and security because those those feelings are going to come up i'm not a jealous person at all but you know you could see when those feelings might come up in certain situations but you won't know until you're put into those situations so you're going to have to figure those out but it's a lot easier to move through those emotions when you have somebody who you have a st- established relationship with when you have a good foundation you can build on top of it so that will definitely be kind of a thing that i'll need to do first and then i'm open to where that where that might go and again you never know how that's going to look communication is the biggest thing about open relationships and you know it's interesting because the types of conversations that people in open relationships have are the type of conversations that even people in monogamous relationships should have and that's i think one of the best things that i learned from that is that even if you wind up a monogamous relationship there's things that a lot of monogamous people don't talk about and they should which i think because they don't is what winds up with people cheating and people doing this and doing that because they don't open themselves up to actual real conversations about sex and the relationship like in an open relationship you have to constantly check in with your partner about how they're feeling and you know where the relationship is and how they're doing and i think that's a good thing to do even if it's just you and them but we get so comfortable when it's monogamous that it's just like that's me that's my partner we have each other forever that they you get so comfortable you don't check in and, and you should so that's one one of the things and then also just sexuality because the people who tend to be in open relationships tend to talk about their sex life a lot more and i think that's something that people in monogamous relationships don't really do and they should you should talk more about your sexual relationship matter of fact i'll probably do a whole episode on like just sex relationships soon but i will say this you gotta you gotta find someone that you're gonna mesh 
together with on the sexual level. And it doesn't mean both of you need to have sex all the time because if you're both not into that, then you know you don't. But you need to find a balance or be able to meet in the middle or be on the same level. Otherwise, it's going to cause problems. <laughs> but you won't know until you talk about it. So communication, a huge thing in any type of relationship, but especially in those. So so yeah, guys, that's, that's it. Um, a little story time for me, a little short and sweet. Throw in the comments if you've ever been in open relationships, if you ever, if you're swingers, if you've had maybe good experiences with it, bad experiences with it, let me know. It, you know, it'd be really interesting to see how many people have been in the same kind of situations as well, or who's in a currently in an open relationship and just super happy, great partners, or what that dynamic even looks like. So I appreciate you guys very much. There's a little insight into the life of Epic Eddie. <laughs> Hope you learned a little bit. And uh, with that, man, I thank you guys again for taking some time with me. This has been a great experience so far. I'm hoping to open up more episodes. I'm working on my very first Foodie Friday that's going to be coming up soon. And uh, hopefully that'll open up some uh, new doors to seeing new people, opening up new doors to just new things. So appreciate you guys. Love you. Take care of each other. Find you some love. <laughs> and remember, guys, life's short. Make it epic. That's a wrap.